London. You know it from countless movies, TV shows, books, songs, and well, just because it's been around since 50 AD. But every time you see it, it's just a blur of buses and buildings, people and places of interest that you know you've heard of or that sound or seem familiar, but you don't really know them because you don't have the context of where they are in the city or how hard or easy it is to get to them. Especially how close these iconic landmarks and well-known places are in relation to each other. Would you know the Tower of London if I showed it to you? Maybe all you know about London is the telephone booths, the world-class architecture, the rare historical artifacts, and this intersection with the statue that is actually not the Greek god Eros. This is London. You may know a little, you may know a lot. I'm going to take you through it. We'll fly you in and around the town, showing you where these sites are and a few tips and tricks along the way as we go over the bridges and through the neighborhoods of London. London is on Earth. To be a little more specific, it's off the coast of mainland Europe. London is the capital of the United Kingdom, and it is located in England. If you are like most people visiting London, you will arrive by flying into one of the two major airports, either Gatwick, and then probably taking a train to Victoria Station, or Heathrow, and then the train to Paddington Station. From there, you are best advised to travel via the London Underground, known as the Tube. Note, the area we will be covering today is only 8 kilometers or 5 miles wide and only 3 kilometers or less than 2 miles north to south. So hop on the tube, don't call it a subway, and make your way to Waterloo Station in the South Bank area of London and then take the short walk to the London Eye. It is 135 meters or 443 feet tall. Right beside the wheel is the London Dungeon and the London Aquarium. Just across the river is the Palace of Westminster, or Parliament, along with Big Ben. Big Ben and the Elizabeth Tower, in which the bell is located, are undergoing a major renovation until 2021. Neighboring the palace is Westminster Abbey, the church that has hosted many of the royal weddings and coronations. From there, we head west to Buckingham Palace. Between the palace and the Admiralty Arch is a road known simply as the Mall. Just past the Admiralty Arch is Trafalgar Square, where you will find Nelson's Column and the equestrian statue of Charles I. Nelson's Column is 52 meters or 169 feet tall. Behind the column is the National Gallery, one of the most visited museums in the world. Like most of the major museums in London and all the museums on this tour, the National Gallery is free to enter.
We're going to head back over to what is the London residence and administrative headquarters of the monarch of the United Kingdom, currently Queen Elizabeth II. Again, I'm talking about Buckingham Palace. Here you can witness the changing of the guard at 11 a.m. every day in the summer and four times a week in the winter. As we make our way northwest toward Hyde Park, we will pass over the Wellington Arch and close by Harrods the Department Store. Hyde Park covers 350 acres and is directly adjacent to Kensington Gardens with another 270 acres. Hyde Park includes the Princess Diana Memorial Fountain, whereas Kensington Gardens includes the Albert Monument. Directly south of the Albert Monument is Royal Albert Hall and three important museums. The Victoria and Albert Museum, the Science Museum, and wait for it... The Natural History Museum. For any of the museums you see on this tour, their visiting hours are generally between 10 and 5. The same goes for visiting Kensington Palace, located on the west side of Kensington Gardens. North of the parks, you can walk to Notting Hill and Paddington Station, but I would use other means to visit Little Venice, and be sure to save some extra time if you want to go see Abbey Road. On the northeast corner of Hyde Park, you will find the Marble Arch, which is right beside the public speaking area known as Speaker's Corner. From here, you can travel toward Oxford Circus down the busiest shopping street in the country, Oxford Street, south of which you'll find Piccadilly Circus after passing through the theater district, known as the West End. Piccadilly Circus is a very busy intersection known for its neon signs and video displays. As well as the Shaftesbury Memorial Fountain and statue. Traveling east, we come to Leicester Square with half-price theater tickets at the TKTS booth, as well as cinemas, casinos, and radio stations. Just beyond there is the Agatha Christie Memorial. Northeast of here are more of the amazing West End theaters and the top museum in London, the British Museum. Among the many fascinating artifacts you'll find here is the Rosetta Stone. Now we are going to make our way further east, getting into the square mile area known as the City of London, or the City, but we're just going to touch on one of the most notable buildings here and then take a quick detour before we loop back. St. Paul's Cathedral is probably the best known work of its architect, Sir Christopher Wren. Directly in front of the cathedral is the Millennium Bridge. The footbridge connects the city of London to the area known as Bankside. and delivers you right up to the door of the last museum on our tour, Tate Modern. The collections in Tate Modern consist of works of international modern and contemporary art dating from the 1900s to today. Just west of Tate Modern is One Black Friars. Completed in 2018, it is 163 meters or 535 feet tall.
Shakespeare's Globe is a reconstruction of the original Globe Theatre, with regular open-air performances throughout the summer months. Speaking of open air, you'll find some of the best views of London from the observation decks on top of the Shard. On your way over, stop by one of the largest and oldest food markets in London, the Borough Market, for some great tastes and treats. The Shard is a 95-story building standing 309 meters or 1,016 feet high. Next up, we're going to cross London Bridge and head back to the city. Some notable sights on the west side of the City of London are the Sky Garden in the Walkie Talkie Building, Lloyd's of London, and the Bank of England. Established in 1694, it is the model on which most modern central banks have been based. We are now going to circle around to the east side of the City of London to take a closer look at 30 St. Mary Axe. The official name of the building that everyone calls the Gherkin. Because it looks like a pickle. Next, we are heading over to City Hall, which despite its name is not in, nor does it serve, a city. At least that's what I read on the internet. One of the most memorable sights you will see on your trip to London is Tower Bridge. Some people think this is London Bridge, but you know we already crossed that bridge when we came to it. And the last stop on our tour today is the Tower of London. You were expecting a tower? Good! That four-cornered structure in the middle is the White Tower, and it gives the entire castle that is the Tower of London its name. When not in use, you can see the crown jewels on public display inside the Tower of London. That's all the stops on this tour. I tried to give you the best overview of London that I could, and show you all the places that I think you'll want to visit while you're here. But there's no way to cover everything. Know that there's plenty more to see and do, so just go out and enjoy yourself. I do want to say that I particularly enjoyed the views from the top of the Shard. But there's Electric Avenue in Brixton with the David Bowie mural around the corner, the Sherlock Holmes Museum and statue. I only briefly touched on Abbey Road and Notting Hill, where you can find the actual blue door from the movie. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention King's Cross Station. It's probably a top destination for the Harry Potter fan in your life. I also didn't go into any detail about the nightlife here. So much to take in from the bars and restaurants to the live music and nightclubs and the musicals and plays. That old, there's something for everyone cliche is a classic, but never truer than for London. It's a great city, a lot of fun, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Thanks for watching. <laughs>